Yo. I got a 2000 Chevy 1500 Z71 in here. The guy left me with a crap load of snow, so he gets a snowman. There's the code. ABS code. ABS lights on. Brake lights blinking. Anytime that happens, you got to replace the AG ABS module. Um, there's a bunch of solenoids in here that need to be replaced. This is the motor and the pump and the modules on top of it. Only problem is with these Minnesota cars, these screws right here are so rusted out, you can't get the freaking things out. So, you might find some videos on this code where people are like, oh yeah, you just got to take the module out and replace the module. Not in this freaking state. There's no way I'm going to be able to get that one out. And um, this came from one of the, the one of, this came from a junkyard that's got about the worst reputation of anyone in the Twin Cities. So I hope it works. Probably got a deal on it, whatever. But yeah, I can't get the screws off of this one either unless I break the heads off and replace the screws because they didn't use stainless steel screws on these and they rust. And it's in a really bad spot. It's underneath It's it's underneath the um, the driver's seat, basically, under the frame. And this thing's so bad already that he replaced all the brake lines on the truck. So I'm just going to replace the whole unit. I knew I was going to have to do it in the first place. I told the guy to get a whole pump unit, and he's like, yeah, if, if this one doesn't work, I can just get, get the old one fixed, and it's like, oh, great. Uh, so, yeah, this will be fun. Here I go. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drain out this system. I'm going to get all the brake fluid out of this system because if I don't, it's going to be a colossal mess and it's going to be dripping all over me the whole time I do the job and i got to bleed it all out anyways. So yeah, if you don't mind getting brake fluid all over you and all over the place, you can just not do this. i got a little super sucker here I'm going to suck all this crap out as much as I can get from the reservoir. You're probably going to go through at least two big bottles of brake fluid trying to bleed this out too. The big bottles. I got all the fluid out of the rear reservoir. There's a little bit in the front still that I can't get at. Now you get to go around and crack all the bleeders and all the calipers and drain them out. And uh, if any of those break, you're probably going to have to replace calipers. Well, I got as much of that brake fluid out as I possibly can. Now I'm going to, there's a safety latch right here for this. You just pull that out. Push this in and get that out. This wire you got to unplug. Nice new lines. That's really special. Usually they're old and crusty and rusty and all messed up. Um, these are 9 sixteenths. Chances are you won't be able to use a 14 millimeter because uh, it's a hair smaller and it probably won't fit. And there's really not a whole lot of room up here. And if you can't get at all of these with a wrench, you're probably going to have to use a crow foot. Which I think that is what I'm going to do. These are big enough nuts too, so you, you really don't need to use a line wrench on these, thankfully enough. I think I'm going to bust them loose and then I'm going to put a shorty on here. Yeah, I can get a shorty in here. Hopefully this won't drip all over me. Gotta pull these out and kind of kick them out of the way so I can get at the other ones. Make sure you put them back in the right spot. They should just fall in the right holes, more or less. I hope.
There, I got them all. Finally. Here's a fun one. Somebody must have had their hand in this trying to fix it. I get a new torque socket. Pittsburgh. Got a T30. That's the wrong size for everything. Fun. Somebody had this wire loom off too. They didn't put it back on. Wow. Did a lot of screwing around on this truck. There's three 13 millimeters for this bracket for the module. And then this module is supposed to fall right out of here. Nice and easy. Nice and, nice and sleazy. I got you! Bitches! All you naysayers out there can go right ahead and try to get these bolts out when it's in the vehicle. This is the rust belt. Stuff doesn't come off like that. So anyways, this bracket bent a little because um, it's rusted really bad. And uh, my new used, whatever you want to call it, didn't come with a bracket probably because the bracket rusted to nothing so I got to use this one. They usually come with a bracket but um, well all I got to do is remember who, who we got it from. So this thing should come out of here if you just pry a lot of stuff apart there like that. There it is. Got you. Another pain in the butt. Look, rust. You want to keep this as clean as possible. You don't want any dirt or debris falling in your flares. So I'm going to blow some of this off. Take these connectors off of here. Looks like I can leak some brake fluid out of this. I'm going to clean it up a little better and then um, put it in. I just don't want any of this crap falling in my brake lines when I torque these down. Yummy. Time to get squirrely. Squirrel the thing up. Squirrel the thing in. Somehow. Be the squirrel. Since my bracket's bent, obviously I gotta do some bending to get the last hole to line up. Now I'm going to use the words fun and crap in the same sentence. I'm going to get all this fun and crap put back together. You want to start at the one on the end first, obviously, because if you put this these in first, you won't be able to get the last one. You want to start these by hand. Don't force them. Don't cross-thread them. Make sure they go in real nice. Like this one's not. You might have to bend the lines just a little bit to get them to line up nice and square. And I think I got that one started. It feels like it's right. You'll know, because if you get it over one turn and it doesn't want to screw in real nice, don't force it. Take it back off and do everything over again, because it'll be cross-threaded. You don't want to cross-thread these. It's too easy to do. Yeah, I got it. I might make this look easy, because I've had a lot of practice. 
I just might stick my foot in my mouth too, saying stuff like that. Okay, those are really tight. And of course, my favorite trick going to take a big bottle of brake fluid and tip it upside down and leave it upside down. Yeah, this is a 32 fluid ounce bottle. I'll probably go through two of these. I think I mentioned that already. This isn't working. Nothing's coming out of here. I'm going to have to use my sucker um, if anybody else does this and it doesn't want a gravity bleed, you can always have somebody help you with the pedal thing. I, I don't, I don't, when, when I got an empty system, I don't like somebody sitting in the driver's seat and pumping up the pedal and bleeding it out that way. I don't like doing that at all because, um, it usually causes some problems because, you're squishing big bubbles into little bubbles and as soon as you relieve all of that all of them little bubbles get dispersed throughout the system so it's really not a good idea so I like to use very low pressure or vacuum so I'm going to use my vacuum to get this thing cleared out and I gotta, I gotta close all of my bleeders now and just do one at a time I can't leave any of them open when I do this Generally when you bleed out a system too, you want to do the longest line first. So that would be the right rear, and then I'll go over to the left rear, and then I'll do the right front, and then the left front. And um, yeah, I'm not getting any fluid coming out of this yet. I'm just going to let it go until I get fluid. Okay, I use my little vacuum sucker. To vacuum these calipers out. I think I got it. Seems to be bled out okay. Anytime you use one of them vacuum machines, after after you get done, you always want to crack the bleeder just a little bit too because you'll you'll always get a little air coming out of the line because it goes through the threads and then back out the bleeder. So you wanna you wanna after you after you close it, then you take the sucker off and then just open crack it open and you might see a couple little bubbles come out of there just to make sure you get it all and then what I do is um like in the back axle I just lightly clamp the hose going to both the lines in the back axle and I do the same to the two front flexible hoses and the reason why I do that for one is because I want to make sure I get I got all of the the brake lines bled right and if there's any air left in the master cylinder, I can push this brake pedal down and it'll push it all up to the top. And I just I just want to make sure that I got a nice hard pedal. And I, I, I gave it one pump and it kind of got a little squishy and then it came right to the top because there was probably a little bit of air in the master. And then I leave it sit for 10 seconds and then I can push it again and it's still nice and hard. So I know that there's no air in the master cylinder or the brake lines. Then I can take my... Uh, now I can take my vice grips off the lines and I can see if it still feels the same way. Well I got no codes in the module, no ABS light. That brake light was blinking because uh, the pedal was down and like the cable for the e-brake is broke so I just kicked back the brake release and pulled it up by hand. You'll have to wire it up or something, I don't know. Fix the e-brake, yeah right. So it's all fixed, I just gotta go under under there and um, it doesn't feel like it's bleeding down at all. The pressure feels really nice, I gotta make sure that none of them lines are leaking that I tighten down and I, got, I gotta do an auto bleed to this thing. Um, a couple ways you can kind of do it manually by hitting loose gravel and just grenading the brakes and getting your 
ABS to activate. Sometimes that works, but I got a scan tool. It's, it's an old piece of crap. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make it work and see if I can do an auto bleed to this thing. Well, I did an auto bleed. The pedal feels really good. I checked for leaps and uh, didn't see any. So uh, me and the little melting snowman's gonna go for a test drive. Okay, bye.